hope your front door is locked and your phone is switched off. It's match time, and nothing can come in the way of a head coach and his blood bowl. This is a match in the Twitch Blubble League, which has just restarted. This is game two. Now, my um, planned opponent has apparently left without a trace. Fortunately, Shawnee was kind enough to step in and take over for him with a rookie chaos scene. He has the standard setup of four warriors, the rest goats, and three rerolls. I am running my Kislev team, which did manage not to skill anyone up in its first match. That's kind of sad. However, we did get some star player points on the Blitzer and some on the Catcher, so that's all good. We also have a dead guy and an MNG guy, so things aren't awful per se. <laughs> In um, when I'm searching for you in cable t TV, are you you're the space sage, right? Yes, just like last time. Just checking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> yeah, this is actually the the username I would pick everywhere if I had the chance. It's just that many places don't allow spaces or uh, have this one already taken, so I wind up with different stuff instead. Um, I did change the stream title, Calf, but thank you all the same. You might want to refresh before uh, checking that. Uh, Nagati Knight, no, tonight's opponent is Shawnee, um, who's got magnificent mane of hair and is a, a beautiful man uh, who, who's got his own streaming thing going, but I'm, I'm just lending Sage a hand as co-host, and it keeps Calf yeah. out of trouble. <laughs> thank you for both of those. So this is actually kind of cool, having having Shawnee, myself, and Zunk all together in one game of Blood Bowl. Well, in and around. Kumo, you've used the S word there. Is that not in your um, naughty word filter, Sage, that you can't use that? <laughs> the S word. Ooh, he's carrying with the warrior. That actually makes a, quite a bit of sense, considering he's facing a strength three team with leap everywhere. Sensible, sensible Shawnee. Oh, oh, the the little emote for Shawnee didn't work. Uh, but yes, Sh Shawnee has got absolutely magnificent locks. <laughs> Cuter than Sage. The, the S word is sidekick. Um, Kanur has a sidekick. I am a co-host, a partner, <laughs> etc. Or as I keep reminding Andy, the manager. I would just go with the voice. I, 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 I co-host for your your fine soul, Sage. <laughs> Side sidekicks are so dismissive, isn't it? It is, yes. Right, so we are in the game. Oh, sean has got the same team strip as my uh, OCC chaos lot. Okay, so far punches seem to be working for him. Oh, Ravenhoff. He's fine. But that puts us at a numbers disadvantage already. Mm. They're not quite at Norse levels of fragility, but they're not a million miles off either, are they? Oh, Kislev. Yeah, they have armor 8, but they play like they don't a lot of the time. never actually played Kislev myself. How are you finding them so far? Well, I've played quite a bit of Slon on Fumble uh, previously, so I've, uh, <coughs> I, sh I should have some experience with them already. Um, I enjoy them a lot, but they are kind of poor rookie team, and they only become decent when you have, say, 16 or 31 star player points on your Blitzers. We're quite a ways off from that for now. All right, all right. He's not making this easy for me, which I do not appreciate in the least. Let's go and skill up defaulted user, shall we?
There we go. That's the stuff. Pushing all the way. I guess the good news is that uh, equally, Shawnee's team is is brand new, so you're not going to be having any mighty blow piling on claw shenanigans. Yeah, brand new Chaos are a decent opponent, although the fact that he chose to uh, carry with the uh, Strength 4 already makes my job quite a bit harder. Well, that's frankly not really sporting of him, is it? So I guess uh, I guess we could hope that they um, struggle getting forward and wind up not scoring because I don't really fancy my odds at a sacking play there. Then again, he has only two rerolls and no block, of course. Also, very kindly bringing in an assist to make sure he doesn't use his horns. That's very good. I've got some sympathy for Shawnee's plight here, and so far as uh, in UK Bubble, my new Chaos team is basically like this, that we've got no skills. Though that's actually, strictly speaking, that's not true. We did have two level-ups this week, so now we do, but we didn't. Let's see if we can hang down here a little bit. Uh, do we want to blitz that? Not especially. I think we'll just blitz that guy. Some. Is um, Shawnee in the stream with us? Are we safe to talk about stratagem speculations or is just after the event <clears throat> stuff? Knowing Shawnee, uh, he will deny that he's in the stream with us. Well, if he says, no, I'm not, then we know he is, so, you know. Yeah. Uh, that's actually the exact type of denial I had in mind. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. This is not ideal, but I'll do for now, I suppose. Really right, and. I like backing up here too much. And, and of course, no inducements. Short surely didn't add to his 40k TV difference, did he? From his zero uh, k treasury, no, he did not. <laughs> right, okay, that choice was made for him. Fun. Yeah, no, he's uh, <clears throat> just pure rookie teams. Except I got some loner online. Has Shuni used one of his rerolls? I didn't notice. Yes, on the pickup with the warrior on turn one, he had. Right, uh, got you. He quick snapped him under there, failed to catch, went for the pickup, failed that too, and. Uh, Decided it was crucial enough to spend a reroll on, which I can't blame him for. Because there could be a lot of pressure on that situation next turn, and he has to use the warrior for it anyway. Hypothetically, if Shawnee had um, struggled with the pickup, so let's say the ball was back on his, um, you know, his symbol on the mm -hmm. way down the pitch there, as a Kislev player, would you countenance trying to jump over the? Um, the Chaos Lads and pressure the ball, or is movement six just a little bit too limited to really make that work? I would have gone around as much as I could and then tried to maybe send one or two guys over after that. Yeah, okay. Middle, middle ground kind of thing. Yeah. I, I wouldn't want to bet on it working uh, consistently because, you know, it's just so... Uh, <clears throat> it's two three plus rolls to get past the line like that. And that is really... Really not easy. Yeah, Especially and, if you want to, to do it a couple of times a turn. Yeah, and to, and to make it work, you, you'd, you'd need three or four players to do it. So that, that really is a big ask, isn't it? Yeah, well, one or two of them could just go... Um, <clears throat> go around, maybe. Oh, no, not that guy. That's guy. All right, random Kaz... Nope, still had zero successful blocks. Isn't this just lovely? Right, so... Mm. So it's so we can file a knockdown as something to look forward to when it eventually happens then, right? Uh, pretty, pretty much, yeah. So, so far I'm just playing these as if they are really, really shitty uh, Dark Elves. 
Well, I mean, from Sh from Shawnee's point of view, there is no easy way to make ground. So, job done. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> it's a bit of a shame that I lost a guy. This would be way easier to do with uh, with eleven, but. I'd like to think I can slow him down a fair bit. He must be starting to feel the time pressure a little bit here. Well, one of the issues that um, I, I find when playing um, early Chaos is that when you're faced with um, variations on um, uh, Elven Column defense, because you can't reliably remove players, you you need to really get a little bit of a break to, to just get through. Because you, you could just basically stand here all day. Yeah, you you really have to get your warriors into contact, uh, make it so that the opponent is too swarmed to make all of his two die blocks, and yeah. and that that gives you your uh, your ground basically. As long as you keep playing disconnected, you're not going to advance much. And because he has one warrior holding the ball, that actually becomes harder for him than it would otherwise be. I'm conscious I don't want to get sucked into my favorite topic about why you don't make Chaos Warriors ball carriers. But I, I don't mean in this specific instance mm -hmm. that you has got to... Yeah. What I mean is you don't build one with sure hands and give him agility yeah. or that. Oh, I think it's a fine topic. Feel free. <laughs> I'm not known for being succinct, but... Uh, okay, what, one of my favorite subjects is folks will sometimes point to a Chaos Warrior who's rolled an 11 and go, Oh, give him agility. Brilliant ball carrier because he's strength 4. Mm -hmm. Whilst that is true, and a Chaos Warrior has some advantages to being a ball carrier, you only have four Chaos Warriors um, on a Chaos team, and they are your strongest, most rugged players that I would argue their role is better fulfilled by giving them all block guard and then if they survive, start adding mighty blow, then claw, and then a mixture of <gasps> grab, stand firm. I got one! Go on! I got a pound! Yeah. Go on! Sorry, Shawnee. Well, I didn't actually get him, I just rolled my first pow. <laughs> yeah, no! Oh, uh, I said I've got one too prematurely, but still, progress! <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's better than it was, indeed. Uh, let's not leave a gap here, which means we're leaving a gap there, essentially. So we've got this one, that one. Ah, you see, Black Seed now raised the question, but what about the Minotaur? Well, that's another favorite topic of mine when it comes to Chaos teams. I don't use one. Now, this is not to say that Minotaurs are bad and anyone who uses one is wrong. This is just my opinion, and here's why. A Minotaur is, first of all, very expensive. Secondly, he's got the Negatrate Wild Animal, so he's not very reliable if you really need him to pull something off. Uh, also, being Armour 8, uh, he's not invincible. Ah, oh, just a stun. Oh. Yeah, no, I, I think you can do some fun stuff with a Minotaur. Having uh, mutation access is very, very nice. But well, the, the, other, the other factor, though, I, I'd, I'd add to consider, is if you've got a Minotaur, you'll tend to blitz with him to get him to move, or at least be tempted to. Now, that, that by itself tends to starve your killer goats of their source of income to get them to level 6. True. Then again, what you typically do, if you decide to play with a Mino, is uh, you blitz with him until you have a better thing to blitz with. Basically a Mighty Blow Claw uh, goat. And at that point he becomes rather useless because you're not going to spend your blitz, which means you're just going to struggle. And so I would... Um, <clears throat> if I would have a Mino, I would start off with one, and then your goats get still get their their first six star player points by uh, by scoring. This okay. is true. Yeah, that that's viable. I, I guess I guess what put me off is that if you take a Minotaur, you then either got to cut back on a Chaos Warrior or re rolls, both of which are something that you want early on with Chaos who've got no block and no sure hands. And blah. True. So, so, to summarize, Minotaurs are not insane, and they can be very good, and they're certainly fun, but personally, 
I don't tend to use them on my Chaos teams. Yeah. If I had to play uh, Chaos in a uh, tabletop tournament, I'd bring a Mino. But that's uh, because of no, no skill stacking. And, different yeah. thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I'm talking context of a, a long term perpetual league. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Right. So you can be here now. Um, Mr. I think playing Chaos is a little bit like um, attending boarding school, that at the time it's a, a living hell when you first get there, um, but in the long run it pays real dividends. Um, Since we have four rerolls anyway, I might as well suffer a turnover. There we go. Way better. Actually, arguably it is. Well, this is still looking pretty good, Sage. Yeah, it's not it's not awful. Still got our guys in place. I mean he's basically gonna have to pick a flank now. And that's that's a pain. Either one. Uh come out, I am looking at it right now, mate. Important punch that. <laughs> <laughs> So one thing I really like to do with my Chaos is um, actually build the first Goat to skill and the first two Warriors to skill. Give them Mighty Blows first skill, Claw second. And then the next two Warriors can get Block and Guard in that order. Because it just pretty, speeds them up. I'm pretty close to that. I, the, the, the way I've gone is Mighty Blow first on the Goats and possibly even Claw before Block, maybe, depending on how adventurous I'm feeling. I did cop out and go block on the warriors this time though and then I tend to feed the warriors the touchdowns if you, if you know what I mean but yeah I, I see where you're going with that it, that does work it, it, it's slightly mm -hmm. higher risk but it's the rewards are better as well yeah the thing is uh, it takes a block guard warrior so long to become a killer and it takes a um, mighty blow claw warrior relatively little time to also get a blocking guard because they skill so fast so it's it's a much faster route to getting 51 plus star player point warriors basically this is true um, I think what um, when we're pondering this um, is I'd, I'd go for block first on chaos warrior number one and all, all four of them take block as first skill but then first skill uh, sorry second skill on the first warrior to get there takes mighty blow the next two take guard, and then the last one takes Mighty Blow, and then you swap. And what what you've got is that one of them is going to streak ahead to get Block, Claw, Mighty Blow, Guard. Um, but I mean, th this, this is minutiae of, of benefit, you know? I think the fact that the, we're all heading towards the same end zone of they want those four core skills, ideally, that, that's really where you're heading there, and there are multiple yeah. ways you, you can do it. So as you saw in the uh, Rebel semi-final uh, on the last stream we did together, um, <clears throat> I've actually got all four of my warriors at that point now, which is kind of nice. It's kind of really, really, really nice. Well, you, yours, are, you're all four of yours are identical, aren't they? Uh, well, one of them also has tackle. You did mention that, yes, I forgot that. And there's a, uh, a difference in the order in which they took their skills, mostly. I definitely think m mixing it up a little um, it doesn't hurt, but um, surely awesome asks, would he get gar uh, a guard goat soonish just to have it? Honestly, I, I tend to go for two killer goats and a ball carrying goat as my first three that have got any signs of points, and then for the rest of them see how it goes. If they don't get any doubles or any stat increases, a, a block block guard goats, you, you can never have too much. Um, I'd, I'd certainly think about it. It's not mad. The problem is you're also juggling the fact that you need to get some tackle going um, as well. So there's a lot of things that you need to do. And a Chaos team only starts to really have most of the bases covered when they're about 1800 TV. So anything less than that, then you've, you've got the job partially done, if you see what I mean. Whoops. 
That's a turn where I needed two rerolls. That doesn't work. I had a brilliant plan when I was playing the other day, but it, it hinged on there was one tiny flaw that I required two blitzes to pull it off. Yeah, I've been there. There's a card for that, actually. One of the more expensive <laughs> special play cards allows you to make two blitzes in one turn. Which Random boy. Pretty... Good night, old boy. Sorry, Sergeant. Mm -hmm. No worries. That one's pretty nasty in, when it comes to cage breaking, obviously. You go, hey, I'll blitz this cage corner. Hey, guess what? The ball carrier's exposed. No shit. Do you think cards will ever get introduced by Cyanide, or have they, they said no one are doing it? I think it's a lot of work for relatively little benefit, so I doubt they'll uh, <clears throat> they'll be that keen. So yeah, that was actually quite a crucial turn though, because it allows him to get a solid scoring threat, where before this he was still struggling to get anywhere near that. And let's him get all my blitzers there. I quite like what Shawnee was doing there, now, now that he's done it, I'm happy to talk about it, that he initially pushed down your left flank, was getting no joy there, so he switched over the right flank, that he's, he's pulling you around a bit, yeah. and he's got a little bit of a gap now, is, is now where you would consider getting the long legs and boinging over things to get at the ball? No, this is where I would uh, try and get in his way and just uh, keep the half nil-nil. Okay. I'm not scoring, that's for sure. And uh, I don't think I have that good a shot at the ball. The most important thing is making sure he doesn't get past me. Now, if I had made that last uh, that last dodge after uh, after needing my reroll on the two die, I think he would have had far, far less advance here, and I would have had a far easier job at getting in his way. But I do still think that simply preventing his advance is the the play here. The format of this competition, this is a league of, of how many coaches in uh, your division? I'm sure someone in chat knows that better than I do. <laughs> That's not my stance. What, what, where I was going with that is, um, if this ends up as a draw, is it the end of the world? Mm, yeah, it's the first season. Um, so we had uh, six seasons. I think I won three or four of them. Um, and then... Uh, we had a reset, and so this is the Cedar season, which will, so basically everyone is in the same level of division right now. Yep, with you. Ah, jeez, so... This is annoying, because he's got both of my blitzers here. I need to block there. I could jump up this guy, that's actually not bad. I really don't want to blitz with this loner, though. That's that's the rubbish part. The jump up blocking him would not be awful, I think. Uh, still, Drake, that's a very interesting question. And do you know what? I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure. So when Sage has finished uh, his turn, um, I, I defer. Uh, to my colleague here to, uh, to to have a go at answering that for you. I've always found uh, the, the relative uh, mechanics of inducements slightly baffling. I'm just about got a working knowledge of it now. Um, could someone make sure that they're holding that question for me because I'm going to... Uh... Okay, so yeah, the I'll... warrior can't score. That's good. At least I'm denying him some precious star player points there. Ah, I think T and Kimmerstone have uh, pretty much answered it for us now, Sage. All right, excellent. excellent. So we're going to need a single leap. Or a, do <coughs> or a dodge, but that doesn't matter. Uh, do we need this before that? Not really, it doesn't matter much. Let's... Oh, 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 that's not good. Please don't feel that again. Oh, bugger. 
Well, that was the one roll that I needed to make this defense pretty much locked up tight. I needed a dodge here and two pushes to make this work. But, you know, relying on 3 plus rolls is uh, not the most secure thing in the world. So now all he needs is to roll a 3 himself, and then he's good. That was very, very crucial. You see, normally in this situation, I'm devoting large amounts of effort to trying to think of something soothing and placating to say. But you seem to have taken that rather bad luck very, very well. So thank you for that, Sage. Oh, yeah, that's... Uh, that's... <clears throat> I tend to get fairly used to this. Um, the reason not to use any of the middle three guys they couldn't... well... I don't think they could have gotten far enough with that action. Um, but I suppose after freeing them up with a push, I could have done the blitz with one and then used the other to GFI to where I was going instead of to uh, dodge, which would have been slightly safer perhaps. I think that I think the challenge is once Shawnee got that break uh, in the previous turn to this mm -hmm. one, uh, he was able to get enough goats round. Um, and once you no longer have a double screen available, just the horns on the goats mean <coughs> that whatever you do, you can push it out of the way. If I had so been I successful on either of those two last turns, uh, yeah. I would have had my screen up. But yeah, I think it was turn, row, turn it? six for you where it, where the problem occurred, and this was a, a follow-on from that. Ablin, good evening. Um, <laughs> we should we should have done a, um, a a little memo to hand out to people. Why is why is Zunk streaming the Sage? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so realistically we're not one turning. Whoa, hold the bus, here's Dode. Hello, buddy. Don't normally see you in, <laughs> in streams or perhaps hanging out the wrong ones. Hello, mate, how you doing? Hmm. Let's see. I mean there is a very nice route through here. But that's not trivial. Suppose we use a blitzer. He'd catch on a four. Oh, I tell you what, hold on to your kebabs, folks. Here's Jimmy. Hello, sunshine. How you doing? How's if the fatherland treating you? If I had two catchers, this would be a hell of a lot easier for sure. I'm not entirely sure what you've got planned here. <laughs> I wait with bated breath to find out. Now let's use the uh, let's use the catcher for it. Uh, uh, surely awesome. Um, I just, there's a lot of teams I enjoy playing. Um, to be honest, I've played a lot of orcs, which I like. Um, Necker are good fun. Uh, quite happily play undead. Uh, quite like lizards. Not not crazy about agility teams, but um, and any of the strength or hybrid ones really. Let's see. So we sh he goes there. We knock him in there. No, I'm to sh 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 knock it off. I don't enjoy pro elves. Pro elves terrible. This is this is pretty pretty awful though. If the kick's bad, I'm just going to do uh, do something uh, pass like. Oh well. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> so minus one to passing and a kick that went all the way. 
Well, that's perfect, isn't it? <laughs> we well, good evening. I, I didn't know you were a sageling, we well. But uh, welcome to the show, my friend. Um, Mipper asked, do I like Kislev? Um, I haven't played them yet, to be honest, Mipper, but they're intriguing. Um, they're certainly different. Remind me a little bit of vampires, that there's not a team that are quite like them. Still no skill. That sucks. Uh, yeah, so getting a two die here is not happening because I chose to blitz an armor eight instead of one of the others. Uh, so we're going to one die something. Which is fine. Do we want to give this guy a single star player point first? Not really, especially not in this weather. Are you um, free to answer questions, Sage, or are you middle concentration? <laughs> Oh, for God's uh, sake. I'm free now. You're free now, sorry. Um, Sig's asking, what do you think about Kislev Bears? I think it's it's good enough to warrant inclusion, but not good enough to be mandatory. They're really, really at the edge for me. You can play a very good Kislev game with one, you can play a very good Kislev game without one. So, yeah, yeah, they're alright. Would you uh, subscribe I... to the theory that, that although they're ostensibly the same thing mechanically, that a, a, a Croxagor synergizes better with Saurus than a bear does with the Kislev clothes? That, and um, if you replace him you get a line acrobat instead of a skink, that's kind of a big deal. <coughs> Um, but yeah, well made. Uh, lizards do the huge wall of guard thing really, really well, and the crocs is crucial for that. Kislev, they hop around a lot. They, I mean, I guess early on it's actually fairly decent because, um, and there is some synergy with the prehensile tail of the bear, uh, the prehensile chain of the bear, and the uh, diving tackle of the blitzers, of course. But I find that by the time your team gets good, I think if if I had one, I'd probably not rebuy it or get rid of it later on. Just because you're even if your team is reasonably skilled up, you're already reaching a very, very high team value. Yeah. And yeah. You don't want that necessarily with a Kislev team. Yeah. Exactly. So I, I, I'd rather stay a bit lower without the bear, but I think if you're gonna get one, um, the start would be the best time for it. The um, the previous question um, about inducements that uh, mm -hmm. we put on hold, uh, yes. as Kim has just reposted there, so I can leave you to handle that one whilst I uh, take one minute, 30 seconds, make a petite. <clears throat> All right, very well. So the thing with the, uh, the inducement situation, it was awful before, uh, because what happened was you could um, one team would get to add treasury first and then the other would and this would be home away based and that means the overdog could uh, could often add um, their uh, add 150k from their treasury and this would not get added to the underdog's um, uh, petty cash which meant that they would not be able to buy a wizard of their own even though they had a lower team value and what happens now is basically in the real rules you're supposed to get a, a separate petty cash phase where um you are able to react to what the other team is doing and either way you will get that money added to your own inducement pool later um that would be ideal cyanide decided that that was not that was too clunky that they wanted to streamline things and so they uh, decided to go for uh, the current system, the previous system, which was really, really awful. And I, I suggested that by um, making the petty cash phase um, start off with the overdog. And if they added something, then that would uh, be um, added to their team value. They could have at least, uh, per at least prevent the worst differences where the overdog got a wizard and the underdog didn't. You'd still have a, a somewhat shitty system, especially with small TV differences and large treasuries, but it would be less bad than it is now. 
Alright, alright, so Blitzing Warrior is not that much fun. But we're gonna do it anyway, which means this is kind of alright. That's an interesting spot for the ball. Do we need this guy? Well, um, you could tell me why you think that. Uh, not good, not good. And that means we're making this block here, which means we're blitzing that because I didn't set up to optimize the number of blocks. Uh, I don't have it set up yet. Uh, a friend of mine who is on vacation right now is going to help me out set it up. Back, by the way. Ah, uh, welcome back. Uh, no, I don't, Nanto. Oh, this is the Blitzer who actually has the star player points. That was bad. He was supposed to do the Blitzing, of course. Let's use this one then. Splendid. Well, we've got five rerolls. I guess we can afford to burn one on this. Also splendid. Dice love me. And the feeling is entirely mutual. Well, let's see. At least loner isn't a problem this turn. There we go. That's the spirit, guys. What they changed about inducements is that they always make the overdog pick first, and whatever the overdog chooses to spend gets added to um, their team value, which means the underdog gets uh, the same amount plus the team value difference. The pros and cons of uh, Kislev. Well, the cons are they suck at everything except leaping. The pros are they're really good at leaping early on. At higher team value, the uh, Kislev uh, Blitzers become spectacularly good because they have general agility and strength access. For a bonus point, what other player do they uh, share that with? Um, for the uh, vampire on the vampire team, but those have drawbacks, which are, which are kind. Of, actually, that's that's not the only similarity. I think vampires and Kislev um, play pretty pretty similarly in a bunch of respects because they're both relatively slow. Um, they both have some trouble um, with their lack of flexibility and positioning in some respects. But they excel at um, anti-cage tactics, basically. In case of Kislev, they just jump in. And in case of uh, Vampires, they have Hypnogaze, which does really well. This is awful. I'm down two players. Uh, my defensive drive failed on a couple of shitty rolls. And uh, my offense drive is starting off terribly. I would not be surprised if I wound up losing this match altogether now. Mm, do we have a decent blitz anywhere? No. <clears throat> now, I wouldn't want to say that this is all just a matter of luck because Shawnee is playing his side of things admirably. But I do think there were some key moments that where I didn't need to suffer as much as I did. Because once you have a numbers disadvantage like this, you know, he's, he's, he's placed it well, his warriors are in the right spots. But because I don't have nearly enough of a team to get everything safe, I wind up having to make lots and lots of extra rolls. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, I I'll already need a GFI there which I cannot really afford to fail because I get served if I do. 
Let's try it anyway. Hmm. Okay, progress. Oh, nice. Finally actually got one. Too bad I screwed up which blitzer goes where because that could have been a skill. Is it worth one? making this a one die? Not really. Uh, at least he's doing something. We need this guy to be gone. And if we fall, I'd rather fall two squares away as opposed to one, which is why we use leap. Because it's a three plus either way, and at least now I make some distance. <clears throat> yeah, so these are the, the roles that we don't really care about that much. So, of course, those are the ones that we wind up making. But it's better than nothing. That's that's always the problem with uh, with dice logs. You you see that uh, there's a bunch of successes and a bunch of failures, but I've had two really crucial three plus rolls so far. <clears throat> one in my turn six and one in my turn seven, and a bunch of ones that was like, yeah, it would be nice if I got this, but I don't particularly care, and I make all of those. That's that's a great truism since the, the, the dawn of Blood Bowl, isn't it? That um, you can have um, equally good dice, but a huge factor that folks really struggle to perceive accurately is the timing of when they happen. Mm -hmm. But then again, you're always biased about those as well. Uh, Indeed. Well, I'd say we're fairly stuck in this flank. And with these numbers switching sides, it's also not going to be remotely ideal. Now, of course, the catcher himself might get past, but getting him sufficient backup is going to be a struggle. Can we get safe before we start rolling dice? If we do, then we're pretty much going back. How bad is that? It's turn 11, so not four rerolls. Only one player number disadvantage now. Because I don't think we're going to rush through here, and I really don't want to get stuck in this corner. How far can this go? Just there. The, on, the only here. safe thing that's jumping to mind is, like, say, going backwards. You, you can progress the ball forwards, but then what? You, you're left yeah. fully exposed. That exactly. Should probably get it back without too much bother. So I'm going to accept that that's what's happening right now because I don't think I can afford to make that. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. Sanity check, yes. Sanity check. This guy could make that blitz, but would that clear enough room? No. So let's use this one. Surely awesome. Thank you for joining us and best of luck in your exam, mate. Alright, that's pretty good. If I make that push. It's not that awful. Um, oops. So are we going to run this blitzer over at some point? He hasn't left me a spot where that's... Where even that is really easy. It's still two 3 plus rolls instead of one. It's a more sensible Shawnee again. Oh! Well, Alright. It's a benefit, isn't it? It's unexpected joy. Yeah. Yeah. That's kind of okay. So just having a quick head count, we're now 9v9, aren't we? Yep, well, that is All correct. Right. 
That gives us some hope. This guy's getting served if I take risks elsewhere first. That would suck. How okay am I with hanging back a little? Yeah, no, we're going to send him here. Good. Um, there, actually. Let's do that with the leap while we're at it. Because distance. Rather be prone here than there. Alrighty. I think this is a decent time to try the whole uh, 3 plus 3 plus thing. I mean, I don't mind if it fails. I'm not planning on rerolling it. There we go. Now he's dead. Now he's dead, of course. Nope, he's fine. <laughs> I, I would, would you ever consider taking. Um Pro at some stage on Kislev players as a sort of a, a cheap version of Agility 4? It's... Uh, I, I have taken it, um, but that was another similarity between the two races, I might add. Um, that was yeah. on a lineman who only have general access, which, you know, I mean, the thing is, your catchers have general agility, your blitzers have general agility strength. So, it's never really high on your list of priorities. But, a uh, lineman uh, only has general, so it becomes better there. And this lineman had agility, uh, wrestle, tackle, and strip ball. And um, he's a, a fantastic sacker, right? Two plus leaping, wrestle, tackle, strip ball. Awesome. And what you often find is that you make the leap, you use the reroll on the leap. And then you roll uh, a skull or a push against a strip baller on oh, on the one die, and that's actually where pro is quite quite nice. Or if you don't really care about the sacking play, you wouldn't spend a T roll on it. You can spend a uh, pro on the um, on the sack and then save the team reroll for retrieval, which might be way more crucial. I guess that's that, that's why that's such a strong analogy to compare with vampires. That um, there's plenty of argument for why pro on a vampire is of great benefit. The problem is that you need, or you really want, block dodge. I think you get more mileage out of those as the first two skills, and then do you want a mighty blow one for blitzing. Do you want at least one tackle one for sweeper mm -hmm. roll, etc., yeah. etc. And suddenly pro starts dropping down the list. And you've got to make a choice at some stage, do I want it or not? And I think as far as as far as we got when we were debating it when Andy was playing the vampires, was it's good, but I'd probably take it fourth or fifth, by yeah. which stage my vampires are really expensive. Same here. Uh, I think it's, well, I could see an argument for third, but then not on one of the first few vampires to have the third skill. One I really like it on, actually, is uh, an Agility 5 vampire because they, uh, I tend to use them for gazing a lot, because it becomes a 2+, plus if you're not in any other tackle zones. Oh, a d agility <clears throat> boost on a vampire is just an absolute godsend, isn't it? <clears throat> yeah, it's splendid. It, it, um, I mean, it, it, op it opens up the viability of then you consider going um, leap. Well, yeah, so I, I, I've had one of those too. I had an agility leap frenzy vampire. Lovely, lovely for surfing plays, obviously. But I find that um, simply having uh, having agility five for uh, for your gazing is already really, really nice. There's a bit of talk in the chat about uh, bears. We, we were talking about this earlier, folks, um, and. It's, S Sage's uh, take on the bear um, was y you can use them, um, but you can also get by without them. Don't forget that for a lizard team, um, they're relying, or often rely, on having lots of strength and lots of guard, in which the, the croc slots right in there, whereas Kislev is a slightly different proposition. Um, so it's obviously it's the same player statistically, but how it fits in with the rest of the team is different. So you can go quite reasonably without a bear on a Kislev team. 
Whereas I'd, I'd suggest most lizards would take a crocs without a second thought. <clears throat> yeah. I mean, there are people who choose to start with a different build from the one I always use, which is to reroll full positional. Um, but I don't think that's very sensible. Right, so you can still get this anyway. Do we want to keep that warrior busy? I think that's pretty sensible. Yep, Jimmy, you're absolutely right. And that that that, <laughs> that exact point was made earlier. That the, the the opportunity uh, cost of a crux is you end up with a skink instead, which yep. is uh, another very very strong argument. Although I'm, if I could replace the crux with a saurus. I'm not 100% sure I would. But it would be a lot more relevant question than uh, replacing the... Uh, the. How much TV is a Crocs? Because the Saurus is only 80. Saurus are incredibly underpriced, and that would be a reason to uh, to do so, I suppose. Crocs is 160, isn't it? No, I'm not sure. I can't remember. I'd, yeah, I think it's less. Like, like, no, the 160... One, no, definitely hang 160. On. Let's, let's, I'll look it up. 140 sounds about right. Yeah. So. <clears throat> saving 60k. I mean, that saves 40k if you count the Mighty Blow. No. No, 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 no. I'd be, I'd be interested in trying it out. Uh, 140. It is. Yeah. So it's kind of medium. One of the guys mentioned earlier about um, trolls and orc teams, and th th again, this is this is one of my. We, we get asked this all the time. Um, I used to like trolls um, because mm -hmm. they are rugged and cheap as ninepence, and once they've got six star player points, they do a pretty decent job and don't stand you at much cost. Um, However, um, they've got a pretty dreadful nega trait, um, and you can really play orcs with or without trolls, and it's entirely down to you. There is no black or white, this way is best answer. The key thing with using trolls, I think a lot of folks fall into the trap of going, well, it's got mighty blow and strength five, I'll hit things with it. If you can resist that temptation um, and move him only on alternate turns as he becomes the front of the cage and the back of the cage and the front of the cage and the back of the cage, hypothetically, if you get the opportunity to do that, you're only moving him and risking a really stupid half the time. And that's the biggest disadvantage, that if he goes stupid, you lose his tackle zones, obviously, but also the guard that he exerts and all sorts of disasters can befall you. But I, I used to quite like a troll. Right, right. So, oh, this is merely a push. We have four rerolls, but we kind of want him to move. Uh, cheeky, yes, indeed. If, if you've got a troll, the one turn touchdown thing is viable. Though, if you look at the statistical likelihood of um, one turn touchdowns, it, it, it's pretty slender. That all, all your opponent needs is a kicker. And if you kick the ball deep, um, the goblins are stuffed because you need somebody to run, retrieve the ball, and then run back to the halfway line and hand it off because they need the throw for the troll. So if the balls kick deep, that usually will thwart the orc's attempt at a one-turner. Never mind the, I'm going to eat the goblin. Never mind, I'm a terrible thrower, and so I might just fumble the throw and put him back on the floor. Never mind, he might fall over. Never mind, he needs to go for it. <laughs> three dodges. There's yeah. so many dice involved. That I, I would, I'd, I'd say that you, you're going to pull off a, a, a one-turn attempt with orcs if you manage one in twenty, you're doing well. Yeah, if there wasn't such a thing as uh, uh, the throw teammate using your pass action, it would be a vastly, vastly different idea. Yeah, because you'd have no downside to trying it all the time. But um, yeah, and if you have, if you had a. Uh, uh, well, I mean, for the one turn specifically, if you have a um, thrower with kickoff return or something, then the chance of getting the ball to that uh, gobo are pretty decent. 
But since the thrower isn't allowed to use the pass action, that reduces your chances of making that um, a lot. What, 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 I've what I've tended to find when I was playing with orcs and with a troll, I would hire a goblin and then periodically I'd fire a goblin or he'd die and I'd not rehire one for a bit and then I'd go, oh, I'll try goblin again. I, th I think I managed it once in oh, 14 seasons of Orca Cola. So, how many games is that? Nine times 14? Lots. Um, it, th there's too much stuff to go wrong, basically. It, if you've got a goblin and you've got a troll and you've got nothing else on, of course, try it. You might get lucky. But it's not a reliable threat. It's a, no, a, sort of a real desperate measure, last dist attempt. So, right now I have a 2 plus 2 plus 3 plus play that I think I'll have to take in order to, uh, to get here. I've worked myself into a corner. Mm, it might even give me a chance at a steal if I'm lucky. I mean... Uh, Chaos are at 9 or 10 players. Question is how to get as safe as possible for when that quite potentially fails. Uh, tell you that is correct. Yes, it is. 40k for Goblin. Um, cheeky McCheek, I, th that's exactly the situation I was describing, that I went through moods of I'll keep a Goblin on the bench just for that purpose, but then he'd sit on the bench <laughs> and I'd rarely use him. Well, if, if you're going to be playing an 11-man orc team, choosing to go to 12 is not that bad, right? You get one KO, you wind up at 10, but you still have the goblin, so you have got 10 and a half. But then again, for 10k more, you could just have 12 real orcs. I went for alignment more often than not. Yeah. I, that t typically, I played with 14 orcs, um, which I know is madness, but the team, the team value was nearly 2,700, so... Everybody had all the inducements they wanted every time we played, pretty much. Hell of a team, though. <laughs> okay, so far so good. Hand off. All right. All right. That seems to have done the trick. Uh, Vistral, um, no, you can you can only leap once per player. But you can do as many leaps as you like uh, with different players. So... <clears throat> we now have five star player points on one blitzer and four star player points on the other. Slowly, slowly getting there. Would be nice to skill one of them, maybe. Oh, he gets the warrior back. That's too bad. So we are at a bit of a numbers disadvantage. Well, all the playful. Yeah. Interesting couple of turns coming up, I suppose. I'd like to add the uh, usual disclaimer at this stage um, that whenever um, folks are asking uh, questions in the, the chat and inviting discussions on how should you do this or what do you think about that, Blood Bowl, uh, one of the great beauties of it um, is that a lot of um, these questions have got no single correct answer. It's a matter of preferences and as long as you consider the pros and cons and then make a considered choice, then that's your choice and, you know, respect that. Obviously, there's some daft skill picks, but there's plenty of stuff that you can go, well, what about this or this? And they're both viable. So, you pays your money and takes your choice, folks. And another thing in similar vein is that um, not everyone wants to play optimally. I think I think if you if you really try and do everything optimally, you wind up with some pretty constrained ideas about how the game should be played. But you can have lots of fun with uh, funky and weird um, <clears throat> uh, team builds. I mean, I've had high elves that I uh, chose uh, wrestle and jump up for, and didn't take dodge until very late. I think I even did sidestep before dodge, just to be weird and cage disrupting. Extra reroll for me. Well, at least he doesn't get one. Kick is deep, which is really, really nice for me right now. Uh, I've also had chaos with no claw, no mighty blow, no piling on, and no dirty player. They still managed to pitch clear, but 
And uh, I mean, I'm I'm playing those not because I think that's the way they're meant to be played, but because it's fun and different. And uh, yeah, so I can still recommend that. To answer the question about the uh, blitzers, the reason for that is mostly the um, the fact that they have jump up, which means even if they got knocked down on one of these sides, they still have the potential to be a threat either forwards or backwards. I'm getting from the chat that Hiroshi is a Wood Elf fan. <laughs> that looks like it. Well, on its honest opinion, um, Wood Elves are one of the more competitive teams without a shadow of a doubt. War Dancers are one of the finest players in, in Blood Bowl. I'd say War Dancers, Gutter Runners, Chaos Warriors are, are all absolutely spectacularly good players. Um, mm. And there are others. Um, however, um, Wood Elves is not an instant I win button. You know, to try playing them and see how you get on. You know, stuff happens to Wood Elves like they die. Yeah, especially in league play, where you're stuck with a team for a longer time. Um, such as... Um... <laughs> can, can you think of a recent example where somebody had a quite a good Wood Elf team and then they all died and <laughs> it all went horribly wrong for a season? It was only one season. They're back. They're back in the champ division now. Who are you talking about, Sage? I've no, I've no idea what you're referring mm -hmm. to. Oh, he <laughs> stayed. He stayed just out of marking oh. range. Oh, that's I, so sad. I, I have to. I have to interrupt you now, otherwise I'm out of a job if I don't. Uh, I'd like to welcome to the channel some guy that uh, I know, Andy Delvo. How are you, sunshine? <laughs> hey, Andy. Thanks for letting me borrow Zog. Care. He just really notices me most of the time, do you? Oh, hey. <laughs> oh, Andy, whilst you're on, for God's sake, put when the next on on the thing. Slacker. Sorry, housekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> I am a free spirit, aren't I? I'm like a summer's breeze, mate. I get everywhere. Do we want to do this GFI? No, we do not. Two, four, six, seven. Hmm. Getting the ball here would still be fairly problematic. Let's say we leave this guy here to at least be able to respond to that a little bit. Oh, hey, there's there's much too much use of this S word going on here. Where, where's my word filter to protect me from this S word nonsense? Right, here it goes. Splendid. Knock this guy down. Or push him around a little bit. Oh, there's a conundrum. I'm going to go ahead and reroll that one. There we go. Because I really don't want to give him a decent handoff option on this flank. And I also want to constrain him a little bit down the center. So now what we need is to cover our bases here a little bit. Oh, apologies still, Drake. I, I did see your question. Um, it, it's a matter of timing it when um, when our Sage ain't concentrated. Oh, like now, because he's just had a horrible turnover. Um, Sage. Yes. Question. Have you heard anything um, about a solution to the Tier 4 stadium crisis, i.e. nobody in their right mind could ever actually buy one? Well, um, what I think would be really cool is if you could just buy it in 50k increments. Uh, you could even add like a, a, a graphical layer of an unfinished... Um, this is not the final turn, uh, and it's also um, very sunny, so he's not going to want to pass this turn either. <laughs> Harish, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not being controversial. I'd, an I'd answer that with "it depends," because you, you, you did cite at high TV, so I I'd be quite happy taking, uh, you know, twenty two hundred wood elves and taking them on with 2200 orcs because I think the, the, the orcs would do just fine. All chaos or anything. Anything with plenty of tackle, frenzy, 
diving tackle, mighty blow, piling on. What are you going to do? So, I mean, Wood Elves, Wood Elves are good, absolutely, but it's... There are many aspects to, to, to Blood Bowl that there is no such thing as a um, the best team. I think the closest we can get is to say that these teams are particularly competitive for these reasons and these teams are slightly less so because of these disadvantages and these teams are frankly just a bit of a laugh. Actually, uh, Nanto, I've, I've had um, the 400k stadium on my Dark Elves, which went uh, with their huge record in call. I don't uh, 62 2 nil. those ones. Right, so chances are we're not scoring. This was just me being greedy, and uh, that didn't work. This one's not going to be relevant. This one might be in theory. So we can get you around there. This one's still a threat. This one's still a threat. This one's not. Could do that with GFIs. Um, Vin Ballon, I mean, you, you're quoting that win rates say Wood Elves are best. I mean, that, that's that's an argument, but um, it, it depends who's playing the Wood Elves, uh, to be honest. Yeah, it's also um, a lot of those stats are derived from NAF tournaments, which tend to focus on resurrection. And you don't have to always deal with the mess. That, yeah, yeah, the, like, the like resurrection my, uh, tournaments, are, I, I, I would say, are a significantly different beast to Perpetual Leagues yeah. or Champ Ladder. They're all different from each other. If you look at the games I lost in uh, that season of the OCC... Ooh, this is a tricky one. Is it you know, worth it down, so it's in the ball Oh, ow, didn't mean to say that. Ouch, sorry. Oh, that was so disloyal. You didn't actually have any Wood Elves, though, so was that technically a Wood Elf team? I, I seem to remember you having three fit ones. Yeah, that was the thing. So I could get on him with the GFI. That's probably my best bet right now. Okay. And then I could get on him. Here, I'm bring him around. So that uh, that kind of backfired here. Sadly, playing for the win leaves me struggling. This might help a little bit, but it might also not. If I free this. I think I'd like to be there. Um, no, Anto, I think it's it's slightly sooner than that, isn't it? Isn't it around twenty three fifty ish? The uh, the gaps are fairly large, um, <clears throat> but to be fair, uh, this was in the time when Cole uh, when Chandler wasn't there yet, so I was playing Cole, and so concessions were a big big part of the thing. Let's see, if I'm here, then at least he has to dodge again. I think I like that. I think we've covered the, um, are the Wood Elves the best team question, folks. Going around a little bit in circles oh, yeah. there. Because I'd have to dodge and go here. Here on a knockdown, he's free. Then he has to get a knockdown and a three. I don't have a reroll this turn. No, <laughs> I don't dare risk that. Yeah, well, I made a big play for the win instead of uh, going for the safe draw, and that might wind up costing me. Fair enough.
No, no, Shani's not in a not in a bad spot at all, really. <clears throat> but yeah, I do think there's a good reason why I didn't focus on the scoring threat last turn and rather focused on the handoff in the center because, especially in this weather. Ah, if I hadn't if I hadn't sent my blitzers forward to try and uh, uh, capitalize on that deep kick, I think I could have probably stopped him. Um, yeah, no, and to that, that's true. Um, I guess where I was coming from with the 2350 was um, when you get to that level, because the, the winnings vary, um, and even with the best will in the world, you're unlikely to win all your games indefinitely. Realistically, 2350 is when your bank balance used to level out. Um, I, I must admit, I'm basing that, though, on the, the Blood Bowl 1 iteration without the the, um, the oh, 150 bank rule cap. The Blitz is a push. Oh, he gets the POW. So now he only needs a single 3+, plus, I believe. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Single 3+, plus to score. Yeah, he gets it. Oh, well. Uh, ah, congrats, Shoney. Have on stage. Tight. Yeah. Shit happens. Biggest learning point, well, I took a big gamble, didn't pay off. Would I do it again? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Would you say that with um, rookie teams, that, um, that the randomness of Blood Bowl can sometimes have more of an effect, that you're taking slightly more chances with every block, every dodge? Absolutely. And has some skills? This, this was my biggest objection to the format of the World Cup because um, they had uh, everyone who qualified for the World Cup had to start with the Team Value 1000 team. All right, YouTube, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, remember to leave it a thumbs up at the bottom. And of course, if you'd like to see more videos, do check out the channel and hit subscribe on your top right.